anniversary bouquet. But it's a symbol of our love. I want it back after the trial. Do you hear me? I want it back. I guess I might as well look at the bouquet. <laughs> Leave them alone. <laughs> They're... They don't make a lot of money. Ah, an English rose. Such a beautiful flower. Ah, this is a rose, is it? I've never seen one before. Did you not take an interest in flowers, Mr. Naruhodo? I wouldn't say that exactly, but I do know three types at least. Gosh, three? Yes, plum blossom, peach blossom, and cherry blossom. <laughs> Perhaps you should consider branching out with some that aren't fruit tree based, for example. I love that pun she subtly threw in there. A oh, branching out? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> of course, only I noticed the puns. <laughs> Gross. It's the worst part of this game. It's very stylish paper the flowers wrapped in, isn't it? Don't be rude! Uh, uh. Just an old newspaper, Mr. Naruhodo. How, how is he being rude? He, he said it sarcastically. Oh, I suppose it's because I'm not used to seeing English print. It looks so exotic to me. He was a sarcastic. He legitimately like looks foreign to him. Ah, I see. There's something wrong. Oh, no, no. I was just thinking that if you wrapped up a stone-baked sweet potato in English newspaper... It might look like some sort of fancy cake. Ah, uh, Susanna san you do love your cakes. Yeah, do you know that? Um, like, very common in Japanese in fall. What, to, cakes? To, to rake leaves and then put sweet potatoes under the pile of leaves and then burn the pile of leaves. And then by the time that the pile of leaves burns all the way down, you have cooked sweet potatoes. And that, then they that, sounds, that sounds unhygienic. They're sweet potatoes. You peel the skin off. It's fine. I I eat the skin of sweet potatoes, but okay. I want it back. G grief. R rest assured, I'll do my very best not to forget, Mr. Sweet. Uh, that's... Now what? Uh, now we have to present, right? Because we pressed everything. We did. So, am I right in that we have to present something? You have to present something. There's nothing else left to press. Okay, so let's uh, let's see what our options are. Uh, case has nothing to do with the Gary does. Believe me, London Bobby's good for his word. Uh, can I see what the Bobby's Code of Honor thing says again? Uh, okay. Next. I mean, this is gonna be relevant because they did move the bodies, but we'll, we'll, we'll I don't know if it's, if it's relevant right now. Uh, okay. Next. Yeah. Uh, maybe there. What? Because the the because the, the flowers were. Is there yeah. something about like what nobody can see? Uh, I just want to see what the flowers say, because because you know, I would have seen it. It's like, well, you didn't see your flowers. No, that's not it. Next. Okay. I'm. I don't know. I genuinely am kind of at a loss. Uh, can you? Can you? Can you either show me the item that I need to present, or the statement, and I'll find the other one. Because I truly, hmm. I, I don't. I don't have a good lead. You don't have to give me any reasoning or anything. That's just like a little hint. Like this is a statement that you need to press 
present something on. Or like this is the item I, that you need I'm, to... I'm trying to think which would be better to, to do. Uh, let's see our if preference. If you know, works. type it in the chat. When the, type it in the comments, like and subscribe. Hit the okay, 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 okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll say it is the most recent piece of evidence you've got. So it's the flowers. Yes. Okay. You, you can't. You can call it a bouquet. You can't say flowers. That's a plural word. <laughs> it's the bouquet. Here, give me a second. Should get the dog more room. It's fair shady, but I'll I'll let inheritance try to figure it out. Okay, Bubba, lay down. Um. Okay, so it's a, the it's the bouquet. Yep. Um. What does the bouquet say again? Can I see it? Um, okay, go back. I will go say it doesn't one. necessarily always have to matter what it says. Sometimes it does, but not always. Yeah, go back to what Pat said. Uh, go back one more. Maybe the bouquet there? It's either the bouquet there or on the next one. Because basically, my, my train of thought, this is what I'm thinking. It's about the fact that the crime scene was disturbed. Like, the bouquet was found where the crime scene actually happened. Yeah. And the body was moved. Like, I understand that. I just don't know how to get the game to understand that for me. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Am I on the right track? Uh, I don't think I should always answer whether you are or not. Fair, fair enough. Um, uh, uh, but it is a flowers. We don't have enough failure marks to just blind try every single one. I mean, I just uh, saved. Okay, so... Go to the second one, the next one. <laughs> At this point, it'd be faster just to click stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just go back to the other one. Yeah, show the bouquet there. Show the bouquet there. Objection. Nope. The winner's last statement is clearly out of this piece of evidence. Nope. I'm sorry, I can't feel, but I failed to see the connection. Oh. But for heaven's sake, would you kindly desist from that wide-eyed, panic-stricken look you want to wear? But it's the only panic-stricken look I know. Okay, so try it on that one then, on the other one. Uh, the other one. That's the one we just did no. it on. Isn't it? Is it? It's the same one. Yeah, I didn't, oh. I didn't proceed. <laughs> I thought I clicked. I thought I thought it automatically moves to the next. <laughs> it's this the item I need to show? No, it's, it's, yeah, it's the same item. <laughs> uh, I was wrong on both. This times. that reveals a damning inconsistency. The last statement. Damning, you say? As I look at you, Counselor, I see your trembling head, your pallid expression, your perspiring brow. Huh? Seems to me that is the damning inconsistency here, with the misplaced uh, confidence of your assertion. I was completely... See, Look, I he has a damning tongue. I, I did not know. You invite it, sir. Yeah, I'm yeah, you're arriving both of those either way. I'm, I'm so off. <laughs> I'm so off in my... In, in, in my hypotheses. Well, you have uh, one in four chance at this point. Is it there? Here, you Is think? There? What's the first one again? 
the very first statement. That has nothing to do with the flowers. Pass. Uh, that, that has nothing to do with the flowers. Pass. That's where I'm sitting right now. The other two are wrong, and then the last one I don't think has anything to do with it. So you're under this one? Yeah. Objection. Nope. We're wrong again. There's clearly something odd about the last statement maybe they witness. There's clearly something uh, odd here indeed. Your behavior, counsel. Oh, <laughs> Please, just don't mind me. It would be significantly easier if you lower your hand. I won't lower my hand until I prove my client's innocence. As long as it's quite quick. I, I love how you're like, it clearly can't be any of the others at this point, so this one. <laughs> and it's the others. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh, wait. I, I, did, I did a something. Oh, no. I think. No, it should be fine. It should be fine. It should be fine. It should be fine. Okay. Yeah. You have a one in three chance now. Oh, no. <laughs> What's the very last one? I didn't take my eyes off the crime scene for one second. Yeah, there. It's strange that the roses were on the other side. Ah, oh, Lord. You claim, Constable Beat, there is nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes you're guarding the scene. But that cannot be. That's embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, four tries isn't too bad. Don't, don't, don't die. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. Keep going. Oh, I got a line. <laughs> take your time. Take your time. <laughs> what? What do you mean to say? Yeah, oh, crap. In your testimony just now, Miss, Mrs. B, you explained to the court that when you arrived back in the scene of the crime with the policemen assigned to that beat, the bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Yeah. And yeah, you were right, Shady, about it being the last statement. That was Shady's guess from the start. Oh. Uh, hey there, system malfunction, how are you? Hey, how you doing, man? <clears throat> yes, on the opposite side of Briar Road, to where the victim was attacked. But considering the size of that meager bouquet, if a single sorry bloom can so be described. Uh, stream's so going great. well, system malfunction. Thank you for asking, system malfunction. No doubt it was blown in the wind across the street back into the gutter where it belongs. We're, we're late in the fourth case of the, this game. Mega? But if that were the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to the fact? No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. Constable Beat swore that to that on Scotland Yard's honor. But the book can belong to me, it has nothing to do with the case. That's, that's why Rolly didn't mention it, I'm sure. Yeah, but you did. <laughs> no, because sadly it's not your only bouquet, only your bouquet we're talking about here. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way round. Think about it. Besides Mrs. Beat's bouquet, there's Mr. Gerardev's book. Mr. Gerardev's copy of the Lion's Pride, which was thrown out the window by his wife, would have struck the pane of the casement window and landed here on the west side of the street. And yet, it was actually found here on the opposite side of the road in the victim's hand. Meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, Mrs. Beat's bouquet 
should have been dropped here at the scene of the crime on the east side of the street, but in fact, was actually found here on the opposite side of the road in front of Mr. and Mrs. Gerdup's house. There's no logical explanation for those things. Unless somebody deliberately moved them. What are you trying to say? The way you're talking, it sounds like you think my brolly's done something wrong. Don't you listen to a word that's pretty loyal, sirs? Well, we don't know about books and boob guys. Why should we care? It's nitpicking, that's what it is. Oh, good. Mrs. Gerdeb's come around. You may call it nitpicking, Mrs. Gerdeb. But deliberately meddling with the scene of a crime is a criminal offense. It's called, um... Tempering, Mr. Naruto. But the person responsible for this tampering can admit to it. For a very subtle but compelling reason. Objection! Tempering? You barely heard the term before. <laughs> <laughs> the point. Tell us, my learned friend, who could possibly have had a chance or a cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? Yes, there was someone who tampered with the scene of the crime that evening. All the evidence and all the testimony points to that one particular person. Counsel, I must demand that you substantiate this conjecture. Who are you saying is responsible for tampering with the scene of the crime? Mm -hmm. Rolling Beat Esquire. Take that! Locum Hababi. Well, he's not a locum Hababi, but. Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Constable Rolly Beat, it was you. A policeman, a member of Scotland Yard. Why would my Rolly do something with that? There's no one straighter than my husband. No Bobby works more tirelessly for the people of London. Uh, I guess maybe she would know. There's no one straighter than her husband. Cat, cat, cat. Sexuality. Mrs. Beat. Shit, he said a woo. He said in a testimony that your husband asked you to go to nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes of your absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. I'm making it up. It's all nonsense, it's all lies! What about that Japanese man with the whiskers? I bet it was him, he did it! If that was true, Constable Beat would have seen him do it. And forgive me for pointing it out, but when you trapped the UK, Mrs. Beat, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. Ah, we're well! Objection! First, you make accusations about the landlord and his wife. Now you incriminate a policeman as well. But your accusations lack one very important thing. Hmm. You claim the crime scene was tampered with. There's only one reason anybody would commit such a reckless crime to hide something. That's right, he's right! But my husband and I just happened to be there, that's all. So why would he... Why would he have anything to hide? It doesn't make sense. But for no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. Mm. Transfer B had a very good reason for wanting, wanting to tamper at the scene of the crime. That's the key to this entire affair. Mr. Ho, have you... Have you managed to solve this mystery? Counsel, you have made a very serious accusation against a London police officer. If you are mistaken, I'm sure I need not point out that your reputation as lawyer will be irrevocably damaged. With that stark warning in mind, you will now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering. Yes, my lord. Council Beat's motive for tampering with the crime scene was to hide. But the victim fell. Where the victim fell to the ground, 
That's what this Barbie had to cover up at all costs. Well, you mean you mean where she was attacked? What are you talking about? We jumped at the very start, didn't we? On the pavement of Briar Road, we saw it happen, remember? It's right here, as if anyone didn't already know. That's certainly where everyone everybody has been led to believe, but in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. We didn't hear either of those what's. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder where this tumultuous trial will end, Council. If that's your assertion, then the court is dying to know, my Lebanese friend. Where are you proposing that the crime actually took place that evening? Where? Left. No, two, two left, two left. <gasps> On the road, there, there. <laughs> Inside Mr. Natsume's lodgings. <laughs> That's... On the opposite side of the road. I, I don't understand. On the evening in question, Mr. Gerdub's book fell directly down from the open window above. And your bouquet, Mrs. Beat, never moved at all. What did move was the scene of the crime itself. Good, good gracious! Shady said in the fireplace. Objection! <laughs> Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony the court's heard. But these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. That, that's right, I saw it with my own eyes. It was five o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was the typical London fog in the ground. When you saw the incident unfold and ran to the victim's aid. That was actually on the west side of Bar Road. No, not true. It, it can't have been. Council will be then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you for help. And during the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in this print. The victim herself, the four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement of the east side of Bar Road. Extraordinary. But the constable overlooked one thing. We didn't hear you if you... Oh. <clears throat> what? What did he overlook? <laughs> God. <laughs> it's the only way it registers these, these like, higher pitches. I mean, she's not the only one that you're having trouble with. Probably other women, though, right? No, you've had, had it with Zeke's. <clears throat> the bouquet, I presume. And and the Australian man. <laughs> exactly. It's probably like settings on my side that I need to adjust. Maybe. <clears throat> the, pro <clears throat> the prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago after the discovery of the roast bouquet. Well, then Zeke said. It wasn't built until the morning as it lay where the street press cast no light. <laughs> Lord Gen Zeke is offended. Mm -hmm. Yes, it couldn't have been in the dark, obviously. Which is why it was only the bouquet that was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of Bar Road. And that is the defense's theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond? Constable Rolly Beat. Um, well, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to nod off again. I haven't slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything important? Oh, Rolly. It isn't true. Is that what the lawyer said is all lies, isn't it? I know this because you're the most upstanding, righteous man I know. I had a dream. A terrible dream. Other things I did that night. Everything come out. Everything exposed. Only it seems... 
It wasn't a dream at all. Good, good golly! Order, order, order! What on earth is the meaning of all this? Oh, really? Why? Why would you do something like this? Moving a corpse, it's, it's a criminal offense, isn't it? Wishing a victim dead should be one too. Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. I, I can't say, sir. What? I really am ever so sorry about all this. We're damaging the Yard's reputation for, for everything. I have a possible explanation. <laughs> For why, on that particular evening, Castle Beat felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? You, a Florida, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. Yeah, Lord Von Zeeks, it is this Florida who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord. No, then, I think you'd better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. England, Japan, makes no difference where you come from. Human emotions are the same. I think I have a fairly good idea of the feelings behind this man's actions. Who well, gives away the motive for Counsel Beats and Thinkable actions? Uh, next. 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 Shady, you can't present people. <laughs> um, I would say this is what I think, because basically it's because it was in his beat and it was his anniversary. That's so it's either this or the ropes, but let's get going. No. 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 Maybe that because it says that they have to help if they're in their beat. Like you have okay. to assist, and then next. No, it's not the rose. So I think it's either the book or the autopsy, well, the crime scene report. Well, you're gonna have um, to pick one. What you going with? Uh, I'm going with the book, but I think either one would work in this situation. Book? The the fourth book? No. That's the only no. book we have. Sure. The, I don't, I, the case files? The, the card. The, the, the card. card. I didn't know you meant book when you said card. <laughs> it looks like a book. Uh. It's like a pamphlet at best. I mean, it's like it's the guy with the hat. He did it. I realized I'm a foreigner in this land, and I only have just arrived from Japan. Also, by the way, you could have been two things: either the warrant card or the rose. Oh, so it wasn't the the crime scene report. Nope. I was close though. Fifty-fifty. At least out of the two, you were suspecting you'd pick the right one. <laughs> Which is why all this information about London's so-called babbies is completely new to me. I've learned that though. Though honorable, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Get between the peace, look after the citizens on the beat in all kinds of ways. There is no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But Constable Beat, the day in question was special. Special? How? An account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh, yes. It was our very first wedding anniversary. Huh. One seek now knows. Cancel Beat now works so very hard, so hard to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife. And we're so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal. When he and Mrs. Beat stumbled upon a crime along Briar Road. Well, 
when you saw that shadowy figure through the frog, is that me? Uh, I think so. When he saw the shadowy figure running, when he saw the shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them. It must have gone through the man's mind. But, sir, it's not a particular day. I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mrs. Beat put up with a lot being married to Bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. Let me check, see. Yeah, that is Van Zeke speaking. That was. This is the one card that Council B offered to lend me earlier. Inside, among the rules for patrolling policemen, it says When a crime is discovered at his beat, a policeman must assess with initial investigations to help detectives. Aha! Uh -huh. Can't beat. Is that or is that not the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said, it's all right. So, that's it. Oh, hey, cool name. We're almost done for the day. How are you? Makes This case makes you glad you don't have a wife. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think Patricia's adorable. <laughs> it was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Hello. Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. Good gracious. Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you've done? It was the first time since I became a copper. That ever cursed God. Stay close to me, Pat. The criminal could be still be lurking somewhere. It ran over to the scene. I had every intention of doing my duty as a police officer. We've got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was lying, and what that meant for me. When a crime is discovered on a beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations to help detectives. Why here? Why did it have to happen here? And why tonight, of all nights? Why? That cool name. I think she. I think he's fine. He does, he's not too bothered by her yanking him around like that. It's a copper's job to guard the scene of the crime, so I told Pat she'd have to go go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then when I opened my mouth to speak. It just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth. This is the next beat to mine, Pat. So you have to go to the police box that covers it. Turn right along Mearsham Street, and then... They do make a cute crumble quill name, see? I'm... I'm... Oh. I'm sorry. Tears. I'm so, so sorry. Oh, Constable. I... I just wanted... just that one night to take my Patricia out for dinner. Oh, darling. Just that one night. You knew that if the incident was on your beat, your evening of celebration would be ruined. So you decided to move the entire crime scene outside of your jurisdiction. Just across the street to the east pavement on Briar Road, which falls under the neighboring beat scare. You see, I... I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. I beg your pardon? Oh, of course he did. Otherwise, my brother would never have let the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement. Ah, I see your meeting now. 
But God got me back for my sins, didn't he? That's why... That's why I missed the rose I bought for Pat. No, Riley, that, well, that was all my fault. I should never have trapped it in such a dark place. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm so sorry that I couldn't help you cover up a crime. I mean, she didn't know he was covering up a crime. <laughs> yeah, but she's apologizing for forgetting because he got caught. So sorry, Raleigh. Oh, cool name. Well, I mean, we're probably next stream going to be starting case five, so unless you uh, go ahead on there, you might end up having to pass on that. That's a week from now. And can you tell us, Constable, how many books did you move from the one side of the road to the other in total? Mm, oh, um, <laughs> four it was. Yes, sir. Definitely four. Oh, he's back to chewing on his, uh, cord. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsume, and the fourth being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the garret of household, of course. Good luck, Colin. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all of the others are scattered haphazardly around, I mean. Oh, well, sir, that's because how I found, that's how I found it. How you found it? What do you mean? When I first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. Uh, yes, cool name. Case 5 is great, and it it is longer than the fourth case, but it's still... I want to say it's like insanely long. It's, there's definitely longer cases in the series. The sure was the book, The Lion's Pride, that the victim was holding. Uh, yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Mm, interesting. I thought it was an open and shut case at the time, you see. There was only the two people at the scene, and Pat and me both saw it happen. However, which way he looked at it, it had to be the fellow who ran off who'd done it, I thought. I couldn't see the harm, really. I didn't think moving at all over the road would make a giant difference. I suppose this is it for me now. I've had it. My lord. Yes, Lord Vajix. Yeah, Shady, the Damon Vet Gant case is one of the longest in the series. I believe that concludes the cross examination of the witnesses. Constable, you may withdraw. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Prosecutor, sir. What would become of my Broly? What would happen to him? For now, you are free to go home. The police will contact you in due course. Uh, cool name. This is kind of a de divisive case. Most second to last cases in Ace Attorney games people don't love because they don't tie in as much plot as usual but I mean I enjoy it please don't punish my husband this, this is my fault it's because I'm always moaning at him from coming home late leave it now Pat let's go home I'm tired All right then, my love. One last thing, Constable. Sir? Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant it may seem to you. Yes, sir. Carve that lesson into your mind. And never again make the mistake of tampering with the seat of a crime. Ah, uh, never again, sir. You, you mean to say... Leave, now. This trial is not yet over. Uh, um... Sir! Uh -oh. Okay. 
R roughly around here is where we're gonna stop as soon as oh, uh, quite a startling revelation I must say whoever thought of a third party transplanting the entire scene of a crime like that indeed my lord nevertheless there are some immutable facts here principally that the accused mr soseki natsune is the only person who could have committed this crime Objection. No, I disagree. Now that we know the true scene of the incident, there is someone else. Another person will be responsible for the knife in the victim's back. Right after we name them, we're gonna... Forgive me for being presumptuous. But I believe the prosecution is probably well aware of the possibility already. Lord Von Zix, is this true? Very well. Name the person, if you will, and if further investigation is warranted. The prosecution has no objection to the trial continuing. You will name this other person who could have perpetrated the crime. Mm, John Garadab. Take that! The defense would once again question. like to request the cross-examination of a new witness, my lord. Like all of these cases, Once again. deflate me towards the end. My assistant made the same request earlier. In order to finally reveal the truth about this case, it's imperative that we cross examine juror number four, Mr. John Joan Gerdab. Me, me, oh dear me. Objection. Like it's just so sad. Like if she didn't mean to do it, if she did it, you know. We don't know that yet. <laughs> she she wanted to kill Olive Green. May may she like kill her. a knife at the window. May, maybe that fight was a cover up. I guess so. <laughs> that request has already been denied. The situation is very different now. Mrs. Gerdab, answer me this. What do you want now, you little toad? At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with a husband, Mr. Jean Gerardab. In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited, and to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened a window that looks out over Brow Road. What of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane of the open top hinged, open top hinged glass casement window, the book plummeted directly below, finding its way. To what we now know to be the true scene of the incident. As I said, what of it? During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Gerdab. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back. Have you really never laid eyes on it before? Recall it. Seriously? Am I supposed to remember everything I picked up and threw at my husband? I think anyway, the men over here in all that regalia said members of the jury didn't even testify, didn't they? Conveniently, yes. Mm. No, I have no recollection of saying that at all. Number four. Jury number four. Oh. Make no mistake, you jurors are not special in any way. You're not immune to the judicial process. If you know something about this knife, madam, let the truth come out. It's just a coming up. Well, God, and I, I could, it could come from anywhere. We have several, like, thank you, Tom. But if, if one went missing, how would you expect me to know? What's that? Are you joking? What are you saying, please, Mrs. Garadab? I really, really... No, you listen to me! I, I refuse to believe in all this nonsense! I couldn't bear the thought that I'd injured someone! Do you hear? I couldn't bear it! Oh, that poor woman! So, just. I want evidence. I want to see hard evidence if you're going to insist that it's all being my fault. 
You don't know, have to prove to me that I threw that knife, if that's what you think. Come along now, chop chop! Do your best! Well... Well, Mr. Navarro? If, if I had evidence like that, believe me, I would have thrown it out already. Then take the stand, Jura. Oh! The prosecution does not object to the defense request to cross-examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Van Zeeks. I am going to, to have to testify. Juror number four. As I'm sure you'll appreciate, having observed it with your own eyes today. Witness testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truths being unearthed. Truths of which the witnesses themselves may not even have been aware. Oh, we didn't get that. Oh, dear me! So I demand your full and unadulterated testimony, Mr. Ga Ms. Garadub. And mark my words, in this court of law today, we shall extract the truth. Do you concur, counsels? Certainly, my lord. Oh, um... That's what I'm hoping for, my lord. Okay, like, we're saving here. <clears throat> I truly like Von Zeeks a lot. Such a strange thing. Like, he just seems he just seems like the most reasonable like prosecutors. Like even more than Edgeworth. Like I know that Von Karma was like a little bit extra and like the other ones probably have their own quirks, but like Von Zeke just feels like he's doing his job well and that's why he's winning, you know? Yeah. Like this whole thing about people like dying afterwards, like I feel like it's still some weird red herring. Yeah. That like it's supposed I, to like villainize him a lot more. I, I do want to say, I, I was ignoring chat trying to get to that last bit. Uh, cool name. Uh, I saw you said, uh, you asked if the assistance uh, in other cases help as much as the one in, or in other games help as much in the cases as Suzada. Uh, in their own ways, they all kind of have their own little things about them that they help with. Yeah, like, my just kind of, like, was, like, snarky and pointed well, out, like, something obvious that Phoenix might have forgotten. Maya's spirit channeling was the thing that helped. Oh, whereas Susato is just, like, she's just well, actually, like, knowledgeable and doing Well, and then a Emma helped with her, uh, with her like scienti scientific, thing. scientific investigation. Oh, well, Emma was the, the one yeah. with the goggles. So, like, every assistant has kind of their own way. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool name. Maya did steal evidence as well. 